Yo, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have our draft analysis for the EWT and this is something that I am incredibly, incredibly excited to be a part of this season. There are so many cool people in this league, some draft league veterans, some OGs that I've known for a very long time, uh, some new people that I've uh, met and become familiar since I came back from my break of Mons. So I feel like we have a really good mix and uh, I know this season is going to be really, really fun for me. It's going to be a league of firsts because it's going to be my first uh, Gen 8 Wi-Fi league with the new timer system and everything. So excited to see how that goes. We also have a, two, a new team name for this league. We are playing under the Harrow Horde Pokemon Club. Uh, for those who may remember me from the past, I used to go by uh, Harrow Horde. I then took like a two year break from Pokemon and YouTube and all of that. And I'm now coming back and I wanted to have some sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, connection or a way for people to remember um, my presence in, in competitive Pokemon and, and YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, just felt like it would be it would be kind of cool. Um, but yeah, really excited for this league. If you guys are new around here and you want to see how we do throughout the season, then please go ahead and, and uh, subscribe to the channel because it is free and it's really cool and you should totally, totally do it. Uh, and also you can leave a like because it only takes a second and it also helps me and it's also cool and you should also definitely do that. Um, with the intro out of the way, I'll just give a, a, a basic sort of explanation uh, of everything going into the draft and uh, then we'll get onto the onto the picks. So there are 16 coaches in this league and we had a randomized uh, draft order. As always, I get cucked by the draft randomizer thing and I get placed sort of smack in the middle. I'm 8th place out of 16 teams, so you literally cannot be more in the middle than that. Uh, which I hate being in the middle. I don't know, I'm not a very patient drafter and I hate picking one mod and then having everybody else make like 16 picks and then I have to pick again. I just hate that. I usually prefer to be close at the end, but kind of used to it by now because it always freaking happens anyways. Um, so with me being in sort of in the eighth slot and uh, we also had 110 points and this is a points because points is the only way to go in my opinion. Um, but yeah, we also had Mons banned that should be banned. Stuff like uh, the Urshifu broken uh, one, the dark one. I think that was the main thing that we banned. We did votes on like Mew and Galarian Darmanitan. We ultimately decided to allow those. I voted for allow because I've yet to see somebody use Mew and absolutely uh, convince me that that thing is busted. Galarian Darmanitan is just brain dead, but there are so many brain dead button clickers in this format. So I didn't think it was worth being banned anyways, but that's just my two senses. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, but yeah, 16 teams, 110 points. We have to draft 11 Mon, nothing more, nothing less. And uh, yeah, coming into the draft, there was one Mon that I sort of wanted to build my whole draft around, which was Galarian Zapdos. That was the Mon that I sort of made like the uh, like made like a, a draft of a draft uh, just to see how it would look. And um, but I, I didn't feel like it, it was like a round one pick, right? At being at eighth place, there's still going to be a lot of good Mons on the board there, so I didn't feel like Galarian Zapdos was going to be a round one pick. Uh, for us. So I decided to think like what would be able to pair up uh, well with um, with Galarian Zapdos and uh, there were options like Celesteela, Zeraora, uh, Aegislash. I ultimately decided to go with Aegislash for 18 points because I feel like um, I've seen this combination used before mainly by Ultra Player. I think he has it in the UBL or the NCP. I'm not sure which one it is, but it seems to work pretty, pretty well. Uh, I feel like they, they are able to break for each other. Um, pretty well as well. I mean, Galarian Zapdos just clicks a button and if I can like break stuff and then Aegislash can set up an SD and sweep with its priority, really, really good. I don't think the nerf to Aegislash King Shield and to like its stats uh, really mattered all that much. So I'm excited to try this thing. I feel like ghost types are extremely, extremely good this generation because of the lack of pursuit and stuff like that. So I want to be sure to get a strong ghost type um, and try to take advantage of it that way. Uh, yeah, and Aegislash also gets close combat now, which is great for hitting like um, normal types and steel types and dark types. Literally everything that would potentially wall Aegislash, close combat hits. So extremely hard to switch into Aegislash, uh, which is great because if people have to prep for Aegislash and Galarian Zapdos, they might struggle a little bit, uh, especially if I'm like special spec specs Aegislash or something like that. I feel like they may struggle with that. Um, so yeah, that's our round one pick. Round two uh, was the round I was going to pick Galarian Zapdos, but I couldn't because uh, Grandmaster D-Ray was 16th and he picked it up on the wheel and that completely, completely, uh, destroyed any sort of plan that I had because that was the one mod I wanted to use coming into this league and, uh, with that out of the window, I had to sort of reformulate the plan and I picked up something that goes extremely well with Aegislash anyways, which is Hydreigon. 
Uh, I'm sure everybody knows how well these two pair up uh, from a defensive standpoint. They literally have zero weaknesses um, in between them. And they also like resist everything that the other is weak to. So defensively, perfect, perfect pairing. I think a really strong dark type is, I found that, at least I feel comfortable with having really start, uh, strong dark type. So I feel like that's really good as well. Hey, Dragon got Dragon Dance this gen. So maybe we'll pull off some sort of Dragon Dance shenanigans thingies. Um, by the way, I have my face there. Should I leave my face there or should I leave them? I don't know what I want to do. Maybe we'll have the stats of the Mons. Sure, those are Aegis Slash's stats. These are Hydreigon stats. So Hydreigon won 17 points. Um, so spent pretty big on the two first Mons, but it's the first two picks like you're going to spend big. Um, but yeah, uh, Hydreigon is a great Pokemon. It's always been a great Pokemon. It's even better now because of Dragon Dance and Scale Shot and pairs up perfectly well with uh, Aegis Slash. After that, I went with Togekiss because Togekiss is the best fairy in the format and do not tell me otherwise because you would be incorrect. If I see anybody say that Clefable is better than Togekiss, I will literally fly over there and I will kick you in the teeth because that is not true. I feel like Clefable is so overrated. I feel like Togekiss is so much better, especially with the introduction of like heavy duty boots. Clefable is like the best defogger in the format and it's the best fairy in the format and now I have a uh, steel dragon fairy core that is absolutely bonkers. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen this core used but I feel like it pairs up perfectly well with each other like absolutely phenomenal uh, dragon fairy steel core and uh, really excited about it. Uh, Togekiss can be a win con with like scarfed air slash and it can also be a nasty plot sweeper and it can also be fat and never die with roost and like heavy duty boots and stuff like that so really really excited for uh, this dragon fairy steel core. I feel like it's absolutely insane. Uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe question of the day is what's the best dragon fairy steel core you've ever seen slash used in the format and uh, if you also want to let me know why what is the best fairy type in the format and why it's Clefable, then you can also, I guess, do that down there as well. Um, after that, I wanted to pick up a very strong wall breaker, uh, mainly something that would not care about bulky water types. So we picked up Heracross, mascot pick, let's go, best uh, Pokemon around. Um, but I picked Heracross because I feel like it's the perfect breaker for my previous mons because this thing can, with a combination of like uh, close combat Megahorn and then facade, like a guts boosted facade, there's little, there's little to nothing that wants to switch into this thing, you know? Um, so I feel like it was a really good breaker. It also is something that takes advantage of bulky water types, which would otherwise be a little bit of a problem because I have guts. So if I switch in on a Scald and I get my, I get my guts boost, then I can just go ahead and click close combat and you will most likely take like 80%, which means that my other mons will have uh, not a hard time at cleaning up the rest of the game. Um, it's our mascot. How could we not pick it? And I also feel like it fit pretty well on this team. I was considering something like Blaziken or something of that sort, but I feel like Heracross just fits the team better uh, because of the fact that it does not care about bulky water types or being burned or anything like that. It's also a really good like Choice Scarf Maki Sweeper, which we may see one week or another. And it also got spikes this gen. I forgot to mention that, but it also did get spikes, which means that I have spike support on my team, which is great. I always like to have at least the option of having spikes. May not click it too often, but just having the the just having my opponent have to like take into consideration that I do have spikes. I don't know. I like that. Anyways, after that we decided to go with Celebi. Now, I'm personally not a huge fan of Celebi, uh, mainly because of the four times weakness to uh, Bug. But the truth is, Signal Beam isn't in the game, so it's not like everybody is going to be packing Signal Beam for this thing. Like whatever gets u-turn or x's or whatever it is i feel like it will be somewhat predictable and uh i have like aegislash and togekiss which literally resists bug times four and then heracross also resists bug times two because bug doesn't resist itself i don't think um so i'm not really worried about um having uh this mon be four times weak to bug it gives us a stealth rocker it's a grass type to also help with uh bulky waters because it has natural cure so it doesn't care about being burnt doesn't care about being toxic or anything like that it could be nasty plot it could be calm mind it could be source dance so we can just do a lot of things and i like mons that can do a lot of things because those are my type of mons but it, it's it's also a really reliable rocker and um and it's a grass, a fat grass type and a fat psychic type. So what else could you ask for? Celebi is on paper really good for this team. I don't know how it's going to be using it because I don't generally draft it because I don't like it all that much. But hey, I said this was a league of first and we'll we'll see if we can we can have Celebi do work. Um, after that, we picked up Nihelago. Now, 
This mod wasn't supposed to be Nihiligo. Uh This was supposed to be Salazzle, and uh, it got picked by, I want to say Talon. I'm not 100% sure, but he picked it up a couple rounds before. So I had to sort of reformulate my plan because Sal Salazzle was going to be my main form of speed, right? 117 speed, that's a pretty good speed tier. It's above the 115s. I feel like that was a pretty good speed tier to, to have on the team. Uh, unfortunately, it did not happen, so I had to pick up something else that I could find that would be somewhat similar, and I decided on going with Nihiligo. Now, I really, really like Nihiligo on paper. It sucks that it can't touch Steel types, but I feel like I have a lot of lures for Steel types, and I'll be able to smack them hard so that Nihiligo can then take advantage of them when they're weakened. Um, it also gives me access to Toxic Spikes. It has a pretty decent speed tier at 103, so we'll be outspeeding the base 100s, we'll be outspeeding Garchomp, for example. It gets cool coverage like Psychic and Dazzling Gleam and stuff like that. It even gets Grass Knot, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it just doesn't get Earth Power, and I don't know why, because it should definitely get Earth Power. Uh, it also has a monstrous Spadef stat, so switching into something like Gengar is so easy to do with this thing. Uh, it sucks that its defense is 47 and that it's four it, that it's like four times weak to rock. It sucks that it's weak to common priority like Bullet Punch, Aqua Jet. It doesn't exactly resist Mach Punch, so that's probably going to hurt if it's coming off a strong fighting type. Uh, so there's downsides to, Nihil to Nihiligo, of course, but I feel like it was the best replacement that I could find for Salazzle at the time. Um, so we decided to end up going with that. It gets Toxic Spikes, it gets bo bo Beast Boost, like Meter Beam Beast Boost can be a thing, and it can be really threatening. So, I don't know, overall I like Nihiligo, never used it, Liga Firsts, we're gonna make it work, I think, hopefully. Um, after that, I decided to get my Ground Type, and I decided to get Sandaconda. Now, Sendaconda, on paper, like, doesn't look all that hot, but I've seen people use it, and, uh, this thing is, like, surprisingly good. Like, because of Shedskin Rest, like, it's almost as if you have reliable recovery. It's not that reliable, of course, because Shedskin's not guaranteed, but, hey, it's, 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 it's pretty close to being reliable. Uh, it's also a really good Stealth Rocker. It has Coil, Body Press, Earthquake, Stone Edge, pretty much the moves that you want to run, uh, week in, week out. Uh, it also has Sand Spit, so I was considering taking uh, like a Sand Rush Mon just to be able to take advantage of Sand Spit, but spoilers, I didn't because I'd be like on, Sh on Santa Conda, you want like sh uh, Shedskin like 9 out of 10 times. So I feel like for 6 points, it's really good value for, for what it provides. It's Spadef stat isn't the best, but 125 base defense, that's a lot of defense, so... Uh, unless you're like super effective on the physical side, you're not really going to be able to hurt Santa Conda all that much. And plus, it looks like a, it looks pretty cool. It looks like a like a double barrel shotgun because of the noses. So I liked that. Does your shiny look good? Oh no, it doesn't. Well, it, it does it. What? No, nah, Chodon doesn't even change it. Anyways, that's beyond the point of this draft analysis. Um, after that, I picked Gastrodon. Now, Gastrodon was not the bulky water type that I wanted. All right, I wanted, initially I wanted Lantern, but Leo picked Lantern like round seven or whatever it was. Was it round seven? Five, seven, yeah, probably like six or seven. I don't know, because Lantern was only like six points. I feel like Lantern could provide a load of utility because of Volt Absorb, Watt Absorb, Slow Volt Switch, Heal Bell, all that stuff. Couldn't happen, and ultimately with the plan that I already made, Gastrodon was the only bulky water type that would fit. There was stuff like Mantine, I really dislike Mantine, so I ended up with, with Gastrodon. It's another ground type after uh, Santa Conda, which kinda sucks. I don't really care about grass types because literally all of my first five picks resist grass, and then Nihiligo kills grass types, so it's, it's, it's manageable, I guess. I don't like its four time weakness to, uh, grass because of random, like, energy ball I'm on and stuff like that, but it's, uh, it's what we have. It's, it's what we have on this team. I guess Gastrodon is still fat. It still has water absorb, so it's a great, like, Drake of a switch in, stop Scald being spammed against me, which is great. Um, still has, like, Yawn to, like, not be completely set of fodder, reliable recovery, stuff like that. So I feel like Gastrodon can do stuff. It's just not my preferred choice on this team, but, um, there was literally nothing else that would fit on the team uh, for the amount of points that we still had left and for the, what, the mods that I had in mind going forward. Uh, so that's Gastrodon. And uh, by the way, I do not have nicknames for like any of these mods. So if you guys have nicknames, then uh, throw them down in the uh, comments. I would appreciate that. Um, after that, we ended up picking up Magmortar for four points. Um, I wanted a fire type. Uh, I wanted something to stop U-turn spam against me. This thing does get flame body, even though its defense is piss poor and its HP is not great. 
it still does get flame body so i guess people will have to think twice before just clicking u-turn freely against me if they see this mech mortar uh, it's also a really good special breaker. It has 125 base special attack, a decent speed tier, like it's outspeeding the base 80s, which is completely fine. So it speeds like Mamma Swine and, and like those funky mons like that. This thing also gets like Thunderbolt as coverage, uh, Scorching Sands, stuff like that. Sucks that it doesn't get Nasty Plot. I just don't think it gets Nasty Plot, right? No. It gets Teleport and it gets Will-O-Wisp and stuff like that. So there's stuff to it, but... Not the greatest, but it's for four, four points. Like, what do you expect? Like, for four points, you're not going to pick up uh, the star of your team. But uh, I feel like Meg Martar will have a role to play this this uh, in this team. And uh, maybe we can make it work. We'll see. Um, after that, I picked up... Whoops. I completely forgot. Uh, I picked up uh, Porygon. So I decided to pick up Porygon because I need a bulky normal type, uh, mainly for other ghost types. I feel like I... Porygon was like one of the only one point mons that I was really interested in using. Uh, I don't, I'm not really a fan of like picking one point mons just because they have webs because one, that means they're going to play with five mons and two, like people don't really respect it that much. Like, uh, like a Q to fly or a charger bug. I don't feel like people respect it all that much anyways. And defog is somewhat easy to patch, uh, to like put onto something. There's also heavy duty boots and stuff like that. So I feel like Porygon was like the best use of my one point. Uh, it's a bulky normal type with Eviolite. It has uh, Eviolite, Eviolite, whatever it is. Uh, you have Trace, you have Analytics, so it can still hit somewhat hard. It gets slow Teleport. It gets Trick Room, I guess, for maybe Age of Slash to abuse it one week or another. Um, so, yeah, for a one-point mod, I feel like it's good. I I, I really wanted Greedent. Because I feel like Greedent's actually... It, Greedent was also one point. I feel like Greedent was super low-valued here because uh, Greedent has a lot of cool text. It has... Uh, like good stats all around uh and it has like a uh, decent coverage so i wanted to greet it but again uh grandmaster d-ray picked that away from me as well so that's two snipes um but yeah porion is fat and it's a normal type and i guess it will uh it will do its job every couple of weeks whenever we face uh really strong uh ghost type that i that i'm scared of we'll we'll just uh we'll just rely on porion to take care of that and then last but not least, I went with Sceptile. Now, I went with Sceptile mainly for the speed because I needed something that would be like somewhat speedy, right? So Sceptile is based on 120 speed, somewhat respectable. It has decent uh, attack stats. It has really good uh, physical coverage. It sucks that its physical uh, attack is worse than its special attack because it, it does get stuff like Swords Dance and like Low Kick and Earthquake and all that stuff, but it's a three point mod. It gives me good speed, something that I needed. It's also like a, a, a mixed attacker. It can be a wall break with life orb. It hasn't burden. So I know like all, I think all, all terrains were drafted. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Tapu Bulu wasn't drafted, but Rillaboom was. So I feel like all terrains were drafted. So maybe that can come into play when I right play somebody that has terrain, um, just to try to take advantage of that instead. Uh, it's another grass type with Celebi, but like they are completely, the two completely different mods. Like they're never going to do the same thing anyways. Um, but yeah, I mainly picked Sceptile for the speed. That's that's mainly it. And maybe people won't respect Sceptile and, and it will be able to get uh, a kill or two on a, on a certain week because it does get Swords Dance and good coverage. So I don't know. Maybe that could happen. Maybe it couldn't happen. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but that is the whole team right there. And um, I, I feel pretty good about it. Honestly, I feel like this team is going to be pretty fun to use. I'm really excited about that Dragon Fairy Seal Core. I feel like that's really good. I'm excited to use Nihiligo. Um, I feel like it will be fun to use. I don't know. If I had to like one pick that I or one flaw that I, I see with this team is my bulky water type. I don't like Gashard on all that much, but we'll just have to make do with it because there was literally nothing left and I didn't want to pick like Mantine because I think that thing is hot piece of garbage trash. Um, but yeah, that is our draft analysis, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed my rambling for like 20 minutes. Enjoyed all my explanation for the picks. And uh, hopefully you will subscribe and stay tuned for our battles as well because it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. I guarantee you that 100%. Like I said, it's going to be my first league on Wi-Fi, so there are bound to be so many mistakes and so many memes born out of this season. I'm so excited for it. But yeah, I will go ahead and stop rambling right now. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you did enjoy, then leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what's the best Fairy Dragon Steel Core you've seen slash used and um yeah i think that's it so peace out